if you slip here, there's no way back. If you're on a rope, you can actually take you up again. Greenland is a large mountain, about 3,000 meters thick of ice, one and a half miles. It's not just the ice, there are big crevasses. These cracks, they can easily be 20, 30, 40 meters deep. And it's quite dangerous, so we have to be careful not to fall in. And I never had an accident, so we spent several days in a year to actually train the students how to actually survive in a special extreme environment. We go with the grad students, sometimes we have undergrad taking part and trained how we can actually rescue people coming out of a crevasse. We have to be well prepared when we go to the field in Greenland. So we have to take a small plane on skis. We have a permanent camp, which is called the Swiss camp. I named it after my home country when I came here to see you, which is a platform, a big wooden platform on the ice, drilled with big metal pillars into the ice. And from there we venture out. We usually stay two, three, four, five weeks on that place. And we have small snow scooters, snowmobiles. And we have on the ice sheet 20 stations. They monitor the entire Greenland climate. It will be minus 40 degrees. It is a big refrigerator. So when we usually go out, we have to stay on the ice sheet. We bring small tents along and have to work on high-tech equipment usually. These are instrument towers. They measure 30, 40, 50 parameters to characterize the climate temperature, humidity, wind. The Greenland ice sheet is white. When you're on the ice sheet, you don't really see any horizon. It is white all around. There are no mountains, no animals, nothing. And to find your way back in a snowstorm, it's really important that you have a navigation system you can rely on. Because it is cold, and more so you have very strong winds. The wind you get used to over one or two weeks you no longer wake up when the, the tent rattles behind your neck. But the wind stops, you will wake up. Something is missing.